Pagkain sa buhay o sa panalangin, let us be united the bond of peace as we lift our minds and hearts to God in prayer and continue this important tradition of prayer for a motion to the way of the cross. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today as a family to contemplate the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. This mystery reflects the reality of your being one God in three divine persons, one in essence, united by steadfast and everlasting love. Grant, we beseech you, O God, that through our devotion to your holy cross, we may be able to find the way that leads us to the charity which every family on earth should possess. Grant us a sincere repentance for our lack of appreciation for the gift of our family and for all the times that we forget that each member is an agent of love. That each member lays a vital road for the welfare of the family and that each one from the youngest to the eldest has the responsibility to make the family wholesome and functional. We ask you, Lord, through this way of the cross, that we may see as in a mirror the reflection of where we are now as a family. And on seeing this reflection, we may, for the improvement of our family life, ask you this to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The first station, Jesus celebrates the Last Supper. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. On the same night, he was betrayed. The Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of him. During the Last Supper, Jesus dined with his disciples and with his own family. It was an occasion of love and forgiveness. In the same meal, Jesus instituted the Eucharist, where he could welcome people from all walks of life. At this meal, the sinners, the down children, and the poor feel the unconditional love of Jesus. He shares with them the goodness of the Father and leads them back to him. At meal time, a family does not only partake of the food, but also the word of God. When we eat together as a family, we thank the Lord for the blessings we see. We share our love, our struggles, and the common experiences that bind us together. 
this is an example. This is an occasion for the family to appreciate each another's achievements and support and encourage one another in the face of failures. Nowadays, we seldom see family eat together since we prioritize TV viewing and prefer other forms of entertainment that replace and take over the time for nourishing our relationship and showing how we value each member of our family. We do not realize that family bonding is further strengthened by sharing a meal together. Let us all reflect on the importance of being present at family meal. Every time we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, we remember how God has to the home of all the people around us. Help us to grow in our appreciation of this sacred view as a family celebration. In this Holy Eucharist, be the center of our family relationship, the place where we grow in God and from which we reach out to others and evangelize them. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the times that we got to engrossed with worldly factors that we failed to give your instruction to the Eucharistic meal. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now and in the end. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the Father of our family. The second station, Jesus agonizes in the garden. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. He then left to make his way as usual to the Mount of Olives with the disciples following him. When they reached the place where the place he said to them, he said to them, pray not to be put to the test. 
Then he withdrew from them about the stone's throw away and knelt down and prayed, Father, he said, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Then an angel appeared to him, coming from heaven to give him strength. In his anguish, he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. Prayer was a very important part of the earthly life of Jesus. He always talked to his father, who was the source of his strength. He prayed constantly due to the demands of his ministry, spending time with his father, not only once or twice, but as often as he could. He never missed consulting his father every time he needed to make a decision. What about us? Oftentimes, we tend to give priority to our job, our studies, and our various obligations rather than spend time in prayer. Prayer deepens our relationship and communion with the Lord. Most of the time, People pray only in the face of difficulties. Should we not also pray in times of great joy? Do we pray together as a family? As parents, we should set an example for our children by scheduling a regular time for prayer. Teaching our children the basic prayers is a good start. Praying the Holy Rosary daily and attending the Holy Mass together is a good habit to develop. Let us remember the phrase, the family that prays together stays together. Lord Jesus, you, you taught us how, how to pray, pray because, because you knew you its importance. importance. You, you always listen to our prayers. Because, because you are, are the source of all our blessings. Grant to beseech you, Lord, to help us understand that through prayer, we are submitting our family to your constant protection and guidance. May our work and activities at home not become a hindrance to spending time in prayer. May our, our family make prayer the center of our life, and may it be our shield against trials and temptation. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Have you forgiven those who trespass against us? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it now will be forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the be mother, mother of, of our, our family. Mary, the saving cross, in the roads of the world, through the alleys of poverty and misery, marching through the long day, 
I sent by God for me to the Father's will. He leads his hand up with all the Lord. The third station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is this evidence these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest put a second question to him. Are you the Christ? He said, the son of the blessed one. I am, said Jesus, and you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of the father and coming with the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his robes. What needs of witnesses have, have we now? You have heard blasphemy. What is your finding? And they all gave their verdict. He deserves to die. Some of them started speaking at him and blindfolding him, began hitting him with their fists and shouting, They the prophets. And the attendants bring those on him. Jesus is the truth, and could never have obstructed the truth. The high priest accused him of blasphemy because of Jesus' spoke things which were not in accordance with their own ideas. But what Jesus uttered were words he heard from his father. Many times, this honesty enslaves us because we are afraid of the possible consequences of telling the truth. But we fail to see the deeper meaning of being honest. Honesty gains trust. 
it opens the possibility of beauty. Um, are we honest enough to tell the truth? We have the guts to admit our mistakes. Do we trust that our family can understand our mistakes and regard them as occasion for journey, for growth and maturity? May the family always be the best place to turn to when a person needs understanding for one's weaknesses and mistakes. Oh Jesus, you are the truth. You accepted the verdict of death for us sinners. You did not receive when you were over over the time. You offered your life for the sake of the truth. Because you knew that it was by the that we would be saved. For example, love for the truth. Thou shalt love it, this honesty, and I can never be the solution with our wrong. When confronted with our wrongdoings, grant us, Lord, to instruct us our hopes and all the lives to the church we call by our family and other people. May you need our strength in facing the consequences of our action. So we believe that the truth we can be given a confidence and trust of our family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Take our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of the Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and to the end forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Be the model of our family. We deliver our saving cross, the roads of the way. You become so far from the team, so we. Marching to the heart of the day, the great God's love and the Lord
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Mary and Joseph be the, be the mother, mother of, of our family. family. Oh, <laughs> 
Jesus carries the cross. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have the king of the world. When they had finished mocking Jesus, they stripped him of the cloth, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off. To crucify him. Jesus willingly accepted the cross. It was difficult, but because of his love, he patiently bore its weight. The cross is a sign of responsibility, of the ability to respond to the needs of others. It is an expression of love that does not expect anything in return. Everything becomes bearable when it is done out of love. In our family, we belong to our responsibility without complaining because we know that it is for the good of our neighbor. As children, do we accept our share in the responsibility of safeguarding the well-being of our family. As parents, do we perform our responsibility to care for the children entrusted to us? Do we carry out our duties with love? As members of the family, are we aware that we have roles to play and every role is important in performing a healthy family? Do we respond to the needs of each member to the best of our ability? As a child, do I appreciate my parents' efforts to provide a bright future for me? All family members should be sensitive enough to the needs of the others so that genuine love would prevail. Dear Lord, Crucifixion was a form of punishment imposed on criminals, on insurgents. But in all humility, you freely submitted to it as a consequence of your faithfulness to the Father's will to save us from eternal damnation. Embrace the cross so that we could receive the grace of redemption. We pray to you, dear Lord. To grant us the grace to be less self centered and more mindful of the needs of the members of our family. May we always do our duties with love for the glory of the Father who entrusted to us our family. Amen. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now already. Be the mother of our family. We bear with our saving God, the Lord's sovereign, through the alleys of poverty and misery, fighting through God only things, freedom and victory, we not deny them. Jesus Christ. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Distance from the great plain to Calvary was not long. The world was rough and winding up. For Jesus, who had suffered the painful scourging, coming with parents, God, treatment by the people, which was a glorious journey, with the cross swaying him down, he stumbled and fell down several times. The weight of the cross became heavier and heavier as Jesus exhausted though he was. The people because of the weight of our cross and to discontinue our journey as a people. Yeah, the family is sacred. Holy family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph. There are times we feel without much thought for the welfare of the children. Unwanted pregnancy in the family may lead to a decision to abort the child. And she will insist on the part of a family member to lead the other to his own and exclude him or her from the family circle. Nowadays, many couples no longer recognize the sanctity of marriage. If some marriage laws and promises are meant to be broken, sacrifice is almost unthinkable for some couples, and dissatisfaction becomes 
a reason to break the marital bonds and part ways. What convictions do we hold regarding such issues? Are we resolved to exert every effort to keep the family intact against all odds? Do you, as parents, safeguard the welfare of your family? Lord Jesus, the weight of the cross did not prevent you from proceeding towards Calvary. We often feel sorry for you and regretful, if not guilty, for causing you pains and sufferings. Help us, O Lord, not to give up on the difficult task of building our family. Or mending a bed and again open relationships, or journeying together toward the future you have in store for us. With your constant guidance and the faith and praise, all things are possible. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will do thine, and Christ. As it is so hard. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among them. Blessed is the fruit of you, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the mother of our family. A seventh station, son of Solomon, thanks to the cross of Jesus. We have only a thanks and we wish. Because by a holy cross, Simon of Simon, happy to talk about Jesus who has his cross. And the way to calm the continue the cross of the show. the out the crucified. Father of 
Simon of Cyrene happened to pass by Jesus, who was carrying his cross on the way to Calvary. He was told to help, and he complied, taking the cross upon his shoulders to ease the sufferings of the Lord of our Lord. The generous compliance of Simon of Cyrene showed that he was a charitable man, a man for others, and a man for God. Let us ask ourselves, are we generous? Does our generosity extend beyond our own family circle? Are we willing to help other families lessen their suffering? Do we teach and guide our children in doing charitable works and generous acts? Parents should set the example of being generous, being offers to the poor, and donating something to the church. Charity begins at home. Generosity starts in the family. Should the mountain of your blessings and of your love for others. Amen. 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 O Father, in heaven, may it be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and for us as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Be merry, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of the womb, Jesus. O Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the model of our family. family. We carry the cross, the roads of the world, the of poverty. Thank 
And we praise you. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. But weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nourished. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, All on us. And to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Being a mother is a great privilege, which is not enjoyed by everyone. It is a gift. The Jewish mothers in Jerusalem, at the time of Jesus' passion, were particularly blessed to be addressed by Jesus in these words, weep for yourselves and for your children. It reminded them of the delicate role of being a mother, the unbreakable bond that unites them to their children. The future of the children depends to a great extent on mothers who are the first mothers of the children's personality. From the womb, a mother nourishes the developing child. Then at birth, the infant feeds birth at her breast. Mothers are the children's first teachers at home. The original passages, the gentle disciplinarian. As a mother, can I still fulfill my primary duty to teach my children to read one mothers, despite my many other obligations at home? With our family, the school of love, where genuine charity is both learned and practiced. As a son or daughter, do I express my love and support for my mother? As a husband, do I give my total love and care to my wife? And do I assume my responsibility as her partner in rearing and forming the children entrusted to us by God? Lord Jesus, those women of Jerusalem witnessed your suffering. Their compassionate hearts experienced great sorrow at seeing you in pain. But you assured them that you were not serving of pity, and their sorrow should be directed on their own selves and their children. Your own suffering could not be compared with the suffering of those who have not repented of their sins. You do not mind your own pains because of your concern for the sinners. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to help us understand that being a mother 
although a privilege, is also an obligation. May suffering and difficulties not hinder us from fulfilling lovingly the vocation of being a mother. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into the kingdom, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and will be forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the mother of our family. The ninth station. When they came to the place that was called the scar, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. Jesus' suffering became more intense as he was treated as a criminal. But he suffered in silence and instead asked the Father to forgive his persecutors, for they did not know what they were doing. 
Can we too suffer with dignity when we are treated unfairly by some members of our family? Our patience is tested every time we are hurt by others, either with their words or their actions. When our parents tell us that we are irresponsible, despite all our efforts to do well our duties, do we nourish ill feelings toward them? When our wife or husband calls our attention for being neglectful of our duties, even if we know we are doing our best to make the entire family happy, do we feel discouraged or even angry? When the family members nail us to the cross of our weaknesses and put us in the box of our shortcomings, do we react violently? Is patience still a virtue in our family? As parents, do we teach this virtue to our children, especially by way of example? Lord Jesus, Mm -hmm. Lord, you are the Lord, 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 the the Lord, the Lord, the when we are being blamed and accused of something, help us to understand that we have our own weaknesses and shortcomings. May we keep calm when our expectations are not met. May we patience and understanding find their place in our goal. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will. Be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of you, O Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and will be forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be, be the, the mother of our, our family. The saving cross, the roads of the earth, to the hands of The tenth station, the repentant thief. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. One of the criminals hanging there abused him. 
Are you not the Messiah? He said. Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all? He said. You got the same sentence as he did. But in our case, we deserve it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, he replied, today you will be with me in paradise. The repentant thief was aware that earthly life is just temporary. And that real life is there in the presence of God. Heaven is our real home because it is being with God. Who is the yearning of every human heart? There is no place like home, we often say. Is this really how we experience being in a family? Is God the center of our home? Does every member feel the presence of God? Through the presence of one another and through the relationships nurtured within the family. Quality time is the answer to the children's hunger for the company of their parents. As parents, do we devote quality time to our children? Do we find time to listen to our children and bond with them? Presence is an important language of love that every member should feel. Do I prioritize my family more than anything else? Is every relationship presence is of great value, even greater than money and any material wealth? Lord Jesus, you want us to be with you in heaven, to enjoy the presence of God, which is the goal of our earthly life. We trust in your promise to prepare a place for us in our Father's home. Grant that while we live on earth, we may cherish the home that is your gift to us. Help us to spend quality time with the members of our family. We may realize that there is no place like home and the company of our loved ones. May we, every member of our family, may we always see our family as a reflection of our real home with the Father. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Come. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now, and in the forever. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the mother of our family. Of the world, through the alleys of poverty and misery, marching to a dawning day, to freedom and victory to God's life, endless glory.
The eleventh station, Mary and John, at the foot of the cross. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sisters, Mary. The wife of Jonas and Mary of Magdala, seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, oh this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. As Mary and John stood at the foot of the cross, Jesus entrusted one to the other, mother to the son, and son to the mother. And from that moment, a beautiful parent-child relationship was born, a relationship that is proposed to us as a model. John was given the privilege of taking care of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he treasured his responsibility. Yeah. Taking care of our parents is a privilege and a sacred duty of children for their parents. However, nowadays, some old people are consigned by their children to homes for the aging, to be taken care of by other people. Others, though kept at home, are not given importance by their children. Some are not paid attention to, as though they do not exist. Others are taken for granted and are deprived of basic needs, like proper food and clothing. 
They all know the pride of man. How do we assess ourselves in relation to our aging parents? Are we like John? Do we fulfill our civic duty of taking care of our parents, especially in the elderly? Lord you gave John the task taking into care of your mother. It was indeed a privilege for him to be with the mother of God. What motivated you to entrust your mother to him was also the love you have for John, your beloved disciple. We ask you, Lord, to make us appreciate the gift of being children to our parents. May we treasure this privilege by being always available not only to provide for their material needs, but we always perform our task of being good sons and daughters to them. May we value their presence at home by giving them the attention they need. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we may pray to those who trust us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Praise our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the Father of our family. Amen. Thank you. 
The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, o Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was now about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipse, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Upon the cross, the wood of salvation, Jesus died to redeem the world. The fullness of what Jesus prophesied about dying for others was realized when he allowed himself to be nailed to the cross. He translated his words into action. How committed are we to putting our words into action, just as Jesus had done? Most of the time, it is easy for us to say we love our parents, but seldom do we express and translate our words into actual deeds of love. As parents, oftentimes, we say we love our children, and we think we have expressed our love sufficiently by providing them with basic necessities, with quality education, and even with luxury items, like the latest technolo technological gadgets. However, we may not be aware that our children have deeper needs psycho-emotional needs that must not be ignored. One of the best ways parents can express their love for their children is through presence and physical touch. A tap on the shoulder, a kiss, and a hug are some of the best ways of assuring children that they are loved. As fathers, do we put our arms over our son's shoulders as a sign of support for them? As mothers, do we embrace our daughters when they have problems in school or with their friends? Do we know that human touch is one of the most comforting gestures in the world? Lord Jesus, you know the importance of touch. Many times, you cure sick people with the touch of your hands. He broke the bread with his hands, feeding the five thousand people. 
Grant, we ask you that we may see the importance of our hands in reaching out to our children and in comforting every member of our family. May we recognize the truth that the physical touch is one of the languages of love that can help us build a healthy family. We ask you, Lord, to make our expression of love complete through physical touch. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And to us in the beginning, now and in the world forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, be the mother of our family. the saving cross, the roads of the world, to the hands of Robert and me, the parting to do our The armies of poverty and misery while we knew our coming men to be the men victory to God's and endless glory. The thirteenth station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea, called Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Pilate thereupon ordered it to be handed over. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean shroud, and put it in his own new tomb, where he had hewn in the rock, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a large stone across the entrance of the tomb and went away. Jesus was brought to the tomb, which was a temporary place. Jesus experienced being enclosed in a tomb to be in solidarity with all human beings who are doomed to death because of sin. For as the Apostle Paul affirms, death is the wage of sin. Though sinless, Jesus entered into the human experience of death because only what is assumed is redeemed. Indeed, it is a grace coming from the Lord who experienced death in order to bring life and light to those who are in darkness. Are we willing to die to ourselves for the sake of our loved ones? Are we ready to share in the burden being carried by other members of our family? Are we willing to become part of other sufferings? One of the most important factors in a healthy family relationship is the ability to listen with empathy. This means listening not only to their words, but also to their feelings that go with the words. Putting oneself in the shoes of another person is a great help in understanding how he, she feels. As a parent, do I allow my children to reason out freely? Or do we suppress free expression by saying, I am your mother or father, therefore I am always right. As a wife, do I also allow my husband to speak and take time to listen to him attentively. As a son, daughter, do I consider my parents' views? Lord Jesus, you experienced death in order to give us life. You were enclosed in a tomb, but on the third day, you rose again from death. Your tomb symbolized darkness, but you overcame this darkness because you yourself are the light. Grant to beseech you that we may accept the little deaths that come our way in our day-to-day -day relationships in the family in order to give life and lighten the burdens of others. Give us the will to always consider the feeling of others. Give us not only ears that are willing to listen, but also hearts that feel compassion. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive all the trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Be the mother of our family. Carry the saving cross to the roads of the world. 
The fourth thing, stay sharp. Jesus rises from death. We adore you, Christ, and we praise you. After the Sabbath and towards dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre and all at once there was a violent earthquake for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. But the angel spoke and he said to the women, there is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has risen as he said he would. After the prolonged suffering, crucifixion and death of Jesus, he obtained the reward. He was raised on the third day. This event in the life of Jesus testifies that suffering and death do not have the last say. Pain that is born patiently for others can only end in victory. Suffering most of the time leads to discouragement, but this does not have to be the case. When we have problems, let us not forget that dialogue and communication are the best solutions. As a member of the family, do I openly show my affection, my pain, approval or disapproval toward the concerned members of my family? When I have ill feelings towards the other members of the family, 
do I communicate and express my feelings in a prudent and un unexaggerated way? There is always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, as the saying goes. Difficulties in the family can be lightened and problems can be solved when we exert the effort to open up to others and have recourse to dialogue and communication. Do we also recognize the importance of family counseling? Lord Jesus, your resurrection symbolizes our liberation from the bondage of sin. Your resurrection is our redemption. We thank you, Lord, for these years. Help us, Lord, not to be discouraged every time we experience trials in our relationship in the family. Grant us the grace to always look up to you as our source of strength, especially when we are weakened by life's difficulties. You are the Lord of the living. You will not allow our family to be destroyed by the forces of evil. We ask you, dear Jesus, to be the cornerstone of our home. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that have saved us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and in our life and death. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and only forever. Amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, in the model of our family. of the Holy Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and we are not to be but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forever. Amen. Prayer. For the family by Blessed John Paul II. Lord God, from you, 
every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Father, you are our love and life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, born of a woman, and through the Holy Spirit, fountain of divine charity, grant that every family on earth may be honored for each successive generation a true shrine of life and love. Grant that your grace may guide the thoughts and actions of husbands and wives for the good of their families and of the families in the world. Grant that the young may find in the family solid support for their human dignity and for their growth in truth and love. Grant that love Strengthened by the grace of the sacrament of marriage, may prove mightier than all the witnesses and trials through which our families sometimes pass. Through the intercession of the family of Nazareth, grant that the church may fruitfully carry out the worldwide mission in the family and through the family. Through Christ our Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life, forever and ever. Amen. So before the final blessing, sa halip po ng ating rektor, ng katilid, Father Dennis, at ang ating mga kapatid ng pari, Father Mosque, and Father uh, Edwell, na uspuso mo ng kapasalaman sa inyong lahat, na nasa lahat ng tumulong upang maayos, solemne, ang ating pagdarasal, ating devotion sa way of the cross. Hindi ko na po mamangitin na namang pangalan, alam ng Diyos kung sino kayo, sa inyo pong lahat na tumulong, maraming, maraming, maraming sa lahat po. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord grant us a restful sleep and a peaceful night. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down with you and remain with you forever. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Magandang gabi isa. We'll see you in the next video.